Yes. Right. In last class, uh, we had discussed about these components and then how these components are behaving isentropically, right? And then uh, in today's class, uh, we are going to deal with this, right? Energy transfer in jet engines. So here uh, we talk about uh, the cases like QS minus QR, that is uh, amount of heat supplied minus uh, heat released, right? And then uh, we are going to find the air standard efficiency. So this is nothing but energy relation. So how we are going to uh, write energy relation for all the cases. Thermodynamically, we are going to write it. And uh, all these uh, energy relations are theoretical energy relations. Okay. Uh, when you are comparing the uh, theoretical cases with the actual case, then it begins as a component efficiency. So for individual component efficiency, we are going to arrange some expression and uh, we are going to arrange some expression for uh, compressor efficiency, combustion chamber efficiency, uh, not combustion chamber, uh, that's like a combustion efficiency, and then uh, for expansion, turbine efficiency, and then for uh, exhaust, nozzle efficiency. On the whole, we are going to write about overall efficiency of the engine. Yes, again, uh, there is some issues, right? <laughs> we will see. Uh, we will see, right? Right, right okay. Uh, uh, so, uh, we are going to uh, evaluate all the efficiencies uh, uh, later on. Okay, uh, now we are going for energy transfer in jet engines, right? So in this energy transfer in jet engines, uh, what we are going to promote is that, uh, so first thing is, uh, we are going to uh, derive for energy transfer, right? Um, so in this, uh, first, what we are going to consider, right? Uh, so using this phase of enthalpy entropy diagram, okay, using this phase of enthalpy entropy diagram, your first phase is said to be called inlet, right? So the first phase is said to be as Inlet. Okay, so in inlet phase, we are going to consider first, right? So we are going to consider inlet phase. So in this inlet phase, right, it is from state I to 1. Okay, so inlet or diffuser both are same. Okay, so it is the state lying from I to 1, right? So when you consider the total enthalpy of the inlet, right? So it's not I is equal to H01, right? So this is the case that uh, here you are uh, going to consider energy transfer so that you are considering only the energy transfer in the inlet, right? So when you consider energy transfer in the inlet, the total enthalpy remains equal. The total enthalpy remains equal, right? So this is the case we are considering first. So in this, uh, what is your total mode? So that is, this is your total enthalpy. Uh, we have the energy relation expression. Okay, what is your total? Total is something with static enthalpy plus dynamic enthalpy. So static enthalpy, HI, plus dynamic enthalpy. Dynamic enthalpy is CA square by 2. Right? And similarly, for this, H1 plus C1 square by 2. Right? So uh, these are your uh, standard form or general form of energy equation. Right? So with the help of a general form of energy equation, you had elaborated it. Now, what is H? So H is nothing but Cp into Ta, right? So for H, it is Cp into Ta plus Ca square by 2 is equal to Cp into T1 plus C1 square by 2, right? So in this, how we are going to express this further? So it is Ta plus Ca square by 2 Cp, right, plus equal to P1 plus C1 square by 2 Cp. Just, I am just uh, divided by Cp on both sides and finally I am getting the expression in terms of temperature, right. Now, uh, when we got the temperature ratio, right, like this, so Ta by, or T1 by Ta, right, so T1 by Ta is equal to, since 
the process is completely taken in isentropic case, right? Since the process is completely taken in isentropic pressure rise. So for isentropic pressure rise, it is P1 by Pa, right? So P1 by Pa equal to the power of gamma minus 1 divided by gamma, right? So this is the expression for T1 by uh, Ta is equal to P1 by Pa uh, gamma minus 1 by gamma, right? So this is for inlet. So with the help of this uh, energy transfer equation, right, where we could be able to solve. That is with the help of energy equation, we could be able to uh, predict the temperature ratio and the pressure ratio for the inlet. So if we know the pressure ratio of the inlet, then we could be able to predict the temperature ratio of the inlet, right? And then our next case is uh, compression. Okay, next, next stage is compression. So in compressor, okay, uh, where these stages are going, okay, uh, the, for the compression, okay, it is starts from 1s to 2s, right? The compression starts from 1s to 2s. That is uh, the temperature isentropically increases, okay? The temperature isentropically increases for compression. So what is the uh, compressor? Work done. Okay, so work done on the compressor. We have to find the work done on the compressor. So when you are considering work done on the compressor, you have to find the total enthalpy. So enthalpy has been raised, right? In the compression process, enthalpy raises so that you have to write total enthalpy as H2S, H02S, right? Minus H01S, right? That is total enthalpy of stage 2 minus total enthalpy of stage 1. So this is nothing but the uh, overall work done of the compressor, right? And then uh, by definition of an enthalpy, it is Cp into T, okay? So we can take Cp common outside and then we could write T naught 2 s minus T naught 1 s, right? So if we consider uh, work done of the compressor, theoretically we will estimate using this formula, that is work done of the compressor is Cp times T naught 2 s minus T naught 1 s, right? This is the formula for burden of the compressor. And then in order to find the temperature ratio, right? In the second case is your temperature ratio. So temperature ratio is set T2 by T1, okay? So when you want to find T2 by T1, or else uh, pressure ratio, or else uh, we can write it as, a, as pressure ratio, right? So pressure ratio is P2 by P1. So P2 by P1 is equal to, uh, T2 by T1, right? T2 by T1, equal to the power of gamma minus gamma by gamma minus, right? So with the help of this, okay, we could able to find the compressor pressure ratio. Let this compressor pressure ratio be R, right? And then we are going to find the after uh, finding the order of the compression, okay? We are going to find the heat supplied through combustion, okay? Here, the heat supplied is not an isotropic process, but it is a constant pressure. Okay, it is a constant pressure heat addition process. So, since for combustion, it is heat is supplied. Okay, then you are going to consider for combustion. For combustion, it is always said to be heat addition process. Uh, heat addition process takes place in constant pressure. Right, so Q is in constant pressure. Right, so Q is in constant pressure means heat addition in constant pressure. Now you have to find the heat addition. So amount of heat addition Q is is equal to. So for this, you are considering the uh, maximum temperature or maximum enthalpy case that is H naught three and then H naught two. Right, so it is nothing but H03 minus H02S, right? So uh, that is, it starts from uh, isentropic process, but it ends with a different heat addition process. So that H03 is not an isentropic process. And then we are having the maximum enthalpy, which is attained in the overall uh, energy, energy state, right? And then in this, you can also consider the formula Cp common outside and then we may write this expression as 
T naught three minus T naught two. Yes, right. So this is the amount of heat supplied through combustion chamber, right? So here in this relation, uh, so, uh, shall we write? Uh, consider the pressure ratio, sir. Yes, obviously this pressure ratio, that is P three, is always equal to P two. And similarly, your P naught three is always equal to P naught two. That is, stagnation pressure is also constant, and then your static pressure is also constant because all the cases of combustion in Joule's Brayton cycle is that it is that uh, pressure is maintained constant. Okay, but your heat is only added. Okay, your heat is only added, but your case is pressure is only constant, right? So as per this case, okay, now. We are going to solve it for after compressor and the combustion. Okay, we are going to solve for and we are going to solve for next turbine. Okay, so next we are going to solve it for turbine. Okay, so for turbine, what is the case? Right, for turbine, what happens to the turbine? So in turbine, work done of the turbine is considered, right? WT, like WC, you are considering the work done of the turbine. So here the enthalpy is drop. Okay, in turbine enthalpy is getting drop. So what is your maximum enthalpy? That is H not three, right? So H not three is is said to be your maximum enthalpy, and then minus of, and then what will be your uh, final expansion outcome? That is four S, right? So T not four S. That is H not. Us, right, so the, by the expression of return of the turbine, okay, just introduce the formula Cp into T naught, okay, for H naught, and then we can write it as T naught three minus T naught four S, right? This is your return of the turbine, and then uh, we are going to write it for nozzle. So before writing nozzle, we could write the pressure ratio for turbine. So what is your pressure ratio of turbine? It is P3 by P4. So P3 by P4 is equal to T3 by T4 whole to the power of gamma by gamma minus one. Right? You know this expression since it is isentropically expanded. Since the process is isentropically expanded, we are using this relation. Right? And then we are having uh, like a compressor uh, and a turbine. Okay? We are having inlet also. Like inlet, we are having exhaust, right? So, what is your exhaust phase? Okay. So, your exhaust phase is up from the state 4s to es, right? So, uh, what about stagnation pressure in 4s and then stagnation pressure about es? So, both are same. And when it is both are same, okay, we may write it as H4s plus. Uh, C4 square by 2 after compressor and the combustion. Okay, we are going to HE yes. plus C square by 2, right? And then we will write this as Cp into T4 plus C4 square by 2 is equal to Cp into PE plus C square by 2. And uh, we can again write it as so we have to introduce yes, no. So T E S T S right. So T4S plus C4 square by 2CP is equal to TES plus C square by 2CP, right? So this is the uh, temperature relation which is helpful for finding the temperature of the exhaust, okay? So temperature of the, uh, that is a uh, nozzle, okay? At the entry of the nozzle as well as exit of the nozzle. And then what will be the pressure ratio? Okay, so what will be the pressure ratio? The pressure ratio is simple that we could write it as P4 by PE. So P4 by PE is nothing but it is it is given by means of isentropic relation. So it is again P4 by PE. Okay, whole to the power of gamma by gamma minus one. So this is the pressure ratio of your nozzle. So likewise, like an inlet, we are having pressure ratio, okay. Similarly, we have for exhaust, we have the pressure ratio, okay. So it is with respect to nozzle and the inlet with respect to deposit, right. So with all these things, okay, 
we can evaluate all the uh, energy relation using uh, uh, different components okay energy relations of different components and now we are going to evaluate the expression for air standard efficiency okay next we are moving for air standard efficiency right that is jet efficiency so now we are moving for air standard efficiency or jet efficiency it's very simple that jet efficiency is given by work by heat supply okay so work done on the system by heat supplied on the engine so it is nothing but what is meant by work so heat supplied minus heat rejected heat supplied minus heat released right so divided by heat supply okay so we will make this expression as qs minus qr divided by qs right so this is your uh yes standard efficiency formula right and uh, we can also rewrite this formula as one minus qr by qs right we can make this formula as one minus qr by qs right and then uh, what is qr and what is qs it's a very big question right uh, uh, qr is nothing but uh, the energy emitted on the nozzle qs is nothing but energy added that is heat added inside the combustion chamber right so you know the value of qs already correct so what is qs so qs we had already derived the value of qs yes this is qs so cp into t naught 3 minus t naught 2 yes right but here i am not going to consider as an uh, total state i am going to consider only static state in this formula so I am going to rewrite this formula as Cp into T3 minus T2s, right? And then we are going to write it for heat rejected on the nozzle. So uh, at the exhaust, we have 4s to Es, right? So 4s to Es. So uh, I am going to write it as Cp times, right? So T4s minus T right so uh, t4 is minus uh, te or else uh, uh, we could be able to write it for uh, 3 to yes that is uh, uh, the heat is released on the turbine only right so since the uh, heat is released on the turbine okay uh, no it is only this one is right so your te your te and the t1 becomes one equal so therefore you are writing it as t1 okay so t4 is minus t1 why i am writing with this means so here uh, in, when you look upon this figure okay uh, here in the excess energy is going to release right but uh, your initial state is your inlet okay when in your inlet from inlet to your compression entry okay from inlet to your compression entry we have the isotropic state and we have the expansion in the nozzle that is in the exhaust section and that is uh, t4s is equal to tes right so when t4s uh, t4s and uh, tes is not equal right but the case is uh, this exist temperature uh, exit temperature exit temperature matches with the outer atmospheric temperature okay exit temperature matches with the outside atmospheric temperature what is your outside atmospheric temperature it is t1 right outer atmospheric temperature is t1 so that i am considering it as t4s minus t1 instead of es i am going to add it as uh, t1 right so with the help of this formula okay when you are going to substitute this formula in the above expression you will get eta j is equal to 1 minus of t4s minus t1 right divided by Uh, t3 minus t2s right right 
now you could able to get this step i think so right and then uh, you are going to change this expression or change this notation in terms of pressure ratio right your jet engine efficiency will be written in terms of pressure ratio so that what is pressure ratio pressure ratio is nothing but compressor pressure ratio compressor pressure ratio is p2 by p right and then uh, what is the turbine pressure ratio it is p3 by p2 right both are equal okay the compressor pressure ratio and the turbine pressure ratio uh, maintain uh, equal to uh, both are equal right uh, for an uh, normal jet engine okay for a standard jet engine that is old model pratt and whitney okay uh, in this uh, pw pratt and whitney model okay uh, the pressure ratio is about 20 is 2 right could you imagine that uh, and you know about the pressure ratio of an uh, piston engine right uh, this around uh, 15 is 2 or 16 is 2 okay i didn't remember exactly if you know about that uh, if anybody know about the pressure ratio of piston engine they can share in the chat box right and um, in, in latest in nowadays we are using ge engines that is uh, general uh, electricals okay so in general electricals okay ge engines of uh, pw pratt & whitney the same engine is carrying the pressure ratio of 30 is to 1 right so this compressor pressure ratio or any uh, turbine pressure ratio both are set to be as 20 is to 1 or 30 is to 1 so it maintains in between 20 is to 1 to 30 is to 1 right okay right okay uh, we will see next okay uh, this is your energy transfer in uh, jet engines so in terms of pressure ratio we are we are going to uh, rectify this right how we are going to do it it's very simple that next thing uh, like temp pressure ratio we can also write the temperature ratio right temperature ratio You can write this temperature ratio uh, T as okay T is equal to R to the power of what gamma minus one divided by gamma right you know it very well and then what is this T right this T is nothing but T two S by T one or T three by T four S right and then we got the value of r power gamma minus 1 divided by gamma where this is the temperature ratio and then uh, compressor ratio right so the temperature ratio and the compressor ratio on equality we can express like this because all these things have been derived already see this for this p3 by p4 t3 by t4 i had written okay but uh, here i have mentioned only the entropy state that is which is isentropic it was mentioned there, right? And then uh, we got to know about the uh, compressor ratio, that is T2 by T1, all to the power of gamma by gamma minus 1. I am just use this relation here, right? I think uh, you now get this step, right? And then uh, what is our air standard efficiency now? So air standard efficiency is given by 1 minus, right? 1 minus T4S minus t1 right divided by t3 minus so t3 minus 3 2 is right and now uh yes uh, t3, t3 minus t2 is right and now uh, what i am going to do is i am going to eliminate the first one right uh, that is the uh, second function that is t1 t1 on the numerator now what we get t4s by t1 minus 1 divided by t2s now i am considering only the two terms okay i am going to take out common outside so t3 by t2s minus 1 okay equal to my own minus what is t1 by t2s right T1 by T2s, it is nothing but 1 by 1 by R to the power of gamma minus 1 divided by gamma, right? And then uh, what is T4s by T1? So T4s by T1 is 
you can just cross multiply okay cross multiply we get the expression r power comma minus 1 divided by comma minus 1 divided by and then t3 by t3 by uh, t2s yes. right so t3 by t2s is again same that is r power comma minus 1 divided by comma minus 1 right so these two terms are getting cancelled finally we are getting the value of 1 minus 1 by r to the power of comma minus 1 divided by comma r the other expression is 1 minus 1 by t right if you know the temperature ratio of the engine we could be able to find the uh, overall efficiency of the jet engine right and now uh, we could have the practical example like uh, uh, just uh, we can estimate it for uh, efficiency of the gas yeah, standard efficiency for Pratt and Whitney jet engine, right? For a Pratt and Whitney jet engine, okay, uh, the compressor pressure ratio that is R is equal to 20 is to 1. That is, compressor pressure ratio is 20 is to 1. And what will be the theoretical gas yeah, standard efficiency? So it's very simple that we can. Uh, substitute here so 1 minus 1 divided by r value is 20 right to the power of gamma what is your gamma 1.4 1.4 minus 1 is 0 0.4 divided by gamma 1.4 right what is the answer what is the answer now okay uh, anyone who are free who are having calci with your hand you can solve it and uh, tell me the answer Tell me the answer of air standard efficiency. You can put the answers in the chart box. Any of the students have found this answer? Those students are working out. Yes, a uh, few students had been responded. Zero point five seven five one. Yes, uh, Bhagirath Kant, you are right, right? So it's about fifty seven point five one percentage. It is fifty seven point one percentage right so this is the energy transfer of the uh, air standard efficiency for the compressor pressure ratio of 20 is to 1 right if it is 30 is to 1 what uh, uh, your standard is increasing now, right your air standard efficiency is going to increase when you increase the pressure ratio so nowadays we are having 30 is to 1 okay so this is the formula for predicting the theoretical air standard efficiency right and then now we are moving for component efficiencies component efficiencies are uh, nothing but the efficiency of different jet engine components okay efficiencies of different jet engine components uh, we have uh, here uh, we had discussed the overall air standard efficiency that is only the only with respect to in terms of pressure ratio or temperature ratio we had estimated this thing right but here component efficiency is nothing but uh, it is uh, uh, this efficiency is helpful for bringing out the amount of heat transfer rate. that is uh, it correlates the all heat relations of different components with respect to actual case and the ideal case right so uh, what is the actual case and what is the ideal case so here in this diagram okay here we are considering only the compressor component, right? So in this diagram, we could be able to see the compressor components only. So in this compressor components, what you could be able to find actually. Okay, here we have the actual case as the work done of the uh, state. Okay, so this work done of the state has been estimated, and here the another work done has been estimated, right? So this is said to be the actual work done, and this is said to be the isentropic work done. 
right i think uh, you may get this step now right so here when you are going from state 1 to 2 okay in actual case it's different in ideal case it's different okay so if you are considering 1 as an static state and then 0 1 as an a total state and 0 2 as an total state right so here we are starting from i okay and then 1 and then 0 1 and then 2 and then 0 2 see here in all the states we have the total state which is found above than the static state okay your total state is found above than the static state so this 1 2 2 this i 2 2 represents uh, stages two stages right so in these two stages when we talk about this first stage alone that is from i to 1 so this first stage of this uh, thing is called as diffuser diffuser component and this second stage component from 1 to 2 is said to be called as what is this this is your compressor state Yeah, this is your compressor stage, right? So, for compressor stage, what is the work efficiency? For diffuser stage, what is the work efficiency? We are going to discuss, right? So, for diffuser efficiency, uh, when you consider the component efficiencies, here we are going to consider about diffuser efficiency, right? This is your first step. So, diffuser efficiency is my first step. So in this diffuser efficiency, what is the fact I am going to consider? So what are all the facts I am going to consider? That is the case uh, here we are adapting here, right? Uh, for diffuser efficiency, I am considering small pressure ratio as one point and then large pressure ratio as the other point. So there are two different kinds of engines so that I am going to consider small pressure ratio first so where is your small pressure ratio inlet so small pressure ratio inlet is a uh, uh, definitely found in uh, turboprop engines so we have turboprop and the turbofan engines right so in turbofan also we have small pressure ratio uh, diffusers right so we have uh, rotary parts so before rotary parts we will form the diffuser section right but that diffuser section gives small pressure ratio and a high pressure ratio right for small pressure ratio okay what will be the heat transfer okay what will be the heat transfer that is the case we are going to find uh, so uh, that is nothing but the diffuser efficiency right so what will be our diffuser efficiency so the diffuser efficiency is this Static pressure rise. It is nothing but this static pressure rise. Static pressure rise. Okay. In actual case, divided by static pressure rise in isentropic case. in isentropic case right so when the uh, states of actual and isentropic state that is actual and ideal case okay the ratio of actual to ideal case is nothing but uh, the small pressure ratio okay that is the diffuser efficiency so what will be the static pressure is in actual it's very simple that we could able to write the value of uh, static pressure ratio rise in actual case it's very simple that uh, we can write it as p1 minus pi right so this is your actual case and then what is your static pressure rise in isotropy case it is nothing but p1s right minus pi so p1s minus pi so this will be the static pressure rise in isotropic case okay so this is the efficiency of the diffuser right and then uh, uh, in all these things right uh, we are going to uh, find the factor using incompressibility right all the flow in the 
turbo jet engine or a turbo prop engine okay any of the cases where small pressure ratio is there so in that a small pressure ratio the flow is said to be incompressible okay that is we are considering mac less than 0 0.3 okay for mac number less than 0 0.3 in the debussy section we are going to have the uh, alternative formula for debussy efficiency okay what is the alternative formula for debussy efficiency now it is p1 minus pa will be rewritten as what is this static pressure right so as per Bernoulli's principle okay what will be the total pressure total pressure is equal to static pressure plus dynamic pressure okay that is half rho c square okay static pressure plus dynamic pressure then what is your static pressure it is total minus dynamic pressure so therefore p is equal to p naught minus half rho c square so using this formula i am going to write it for p1 now. so what is for p1 so it is p naught one minus half rho c1 square right and then we are going to write it for pa so minus of for pa same thing so p naught i minus half rho c a square right and then uh, uh, we can estimate it for p1 minus p a so p1 minus p a is estimated using the Bernoulli's formula since it is incompressible since the flow is incompressible in the diffuser section right that is at the inlet section now uh, you are going to find it for p1s minus pa right uh, now we are going to find it for p1s minus pa right what is p1s for p1s what will be the total pressure right for p1s the total pressure is p naught a right so the for p1s total pressure is p naught a so p naught i minus half rho c1 square right and then minus of again p naught i plus half rho c a square right so this p naught i p naught i is getting cancelled and the, what is that half rho taking common outside we will get what c a square minus c1 square so this is nothing but change in kinetic energy of the flow this represents change in kinetic energy of the flow per unit density so the change in kinetic energy per unit density is considered for evaluating the for, uh, efficiency of the small pressure ratio uh, diffuser so efficiency of small pressure ratio diffuser is now for uh, p1 minus pa so p1 minus pa divided by half rho c a square minus c1 square right so this is going to be the efficiency of the smaller turbine right so like this you can also estimate for a large pressure ratio now your second case is large pressure ratio right so for large pressure ratio what will be the diffuser efficiency okay for large pressure ratio it is given as nita d dash okay so for this you are considering enthalpy of the state here i am going to consider for enthalpy of the state since uh, large pressure ratio is found only in what uh, your uh, supersonic flows a large pressure ratio is found only in uh, supersonic flows here we are going to consider only for what uh, uh, only one case that is the uh, all kind of high speed flows so for a high speed flow diffusers okay large pressure ratio is coming out so for estimating the larger pressure ratio here we have the diffuser efficiency formula as enthalpy state that is change in enthalpy in actual process okay and then change in enthalpy in isotropic process so here it is like enthalpy in isentropic state change in enthalpy in isentropic state and then change in enthalpy in
actual state right uh, here uh, the same thing uh, here you are going to write it as this enthalpy in isentropic case as that is h1 okay h1 yes h1 yes minus h a and then uh, this enthalpy in actual state as h1 minus h a right so when it is said to be isentropic you are introducing s in one term that's it and then when you substitute the formula of cp into t in terms of temperature we could write it as p1s minus ta divided by p1 minus t right so this will be the diffusion rate efficiency in terms of temperature ratio and then we can also write this uh, diffusion rate efficiency in terms of mach number in terms of mach number okay so how it is uh, how we are uh, supposed to write it in terms of uh, mach number so for this so in terms of mach number it's very simple that we could able to uh, uh, do it right uh, for mach number uh, right uh, for uh, you can take it out ta common outside first so in the given equation, we can take for nita d dash, okay, T A common outside. So what it is? T one s by T A minus one divided by T A T one by T A minus one. Right. So this T A T A is getting cancelled. And then what is T1 by TA? This T1 by TA is nothing but 1 plus comma minus 1 divided by 2 MA square. You know this expression, temperature ratio in terms of Mach number, right? That is our inlet Mach number or the jet speed Mach number, right? And then uh, from this, what is T1 by TA? So T1 by TA is nothing but 1 plus uh, T1 by TA minus 1. Okay, what is T1 by TA minus 1? So it's equal to 1 plus comma minus 1 divided by 2 mi square minus 1, right? So this plus 1 minus 1 is getting cancelled. Finally, we get comma minus 1 divided by 2 mi square. So for this denominator, we had executed. Okay, then what is for numerator? That is T1s by TA. That is isentropic relation you have to follow. So for this P1s by Pi, okay, hold to the power of Gamma minus one divided by gamma, right? So finally, what will be your depreciation efficiency in terms of pressure ratio? It is nothing but P one s by P a all to the power of gamma minus one divided by gamma minus one, right? Divided by gamma minus one divided by two m a square. So this is the depreciation efficiency for an larger pressure ratio. Right, so we had executed component efficiencies of uh, two different ratios. That is a, a divisor uh, pressure ratio, and then we are we are executing this component efficiency for uh, divisor first thing. Okay, and then we are going to execute for after divisor we are having compressor. Right, now we are going to estimate for compressor efficiency, and then like a, a compressor. Okay, combustion efficiency and then turbine efficiency. Okay, after that, we are going to find the propulsive efficiency and then overall efficiency of the engine. Right? So on the whole, what will be the overall efficiency of the engine? So likewise, we are going to estimate. Okay, in upcoming classes, I, mean, I, I will discuss it, right? And now I'm going to show some of the stats regarding the LMS class, right? I would like to show to you. Please wait for a while. 